Hello, welcome back to my channel. I am Kismon Grief, and today, as you can tell by the title below, I'll be going over genome duplication in vertebrates. Now, vertebrates are unique in that their genome has developed through whole genome duplication, or WGD. Now, this has happened two times at the period closer to their origin. This has been known as the two round or two R hypothesis. The duplication of genes and the duplication of entire genomes are important mechanisms which facilitate the increasing complexity of organisms throughout their evolutionary history. Now, gene duplication can allow for functional diversification of genes, forming gene families and overall increasing the geno genomic and potentially the phenotypic complexity. Now, the WGD hypothesis can, is only a hypothesis, but there is big pieces of evidence that support this hypothesis. And that is um, the paralogenous genes, which emerged around the same time as the first vertebrates, but are not distributed at random in the human genome, but instead has a strong tendency appear in clusters usually on four separate chromosomes. Now in recent history comparisons between the human genome and the amphixius um, or by Latin name Branchiostoma florida, florida genome has resulted in the discovery that four sets of human gene clusters correlates with one set of linked genes in the B. Florida. Now, the exact time of the whole genome duplication to the emergence of the jawless vertebrates is still quite a controversial issue. Now, one of the commonly held views is that the whole genome dupl duplication occurred in an ancestor of both the jawed and jawless vertebrae. Now, the second WGD probably only occurred in the ancestor of the jawed vertebrates and not the jawless. Now, this final duplication is estimated to have happened somewhere along the lineage leading to Teleos um, fish after there was a divergence from sturgeons or gars. Now, how many of you have heard of Hox genes before? As one specific collection of duplicated genes, which have been a focus of much research are, um, are the Hox gene clusters. Now the Hox subfamily of homeobox genes and research currently shows that it is a specific animal invention. Um, there have been, they have been discovered in all animal groups with the only exception being sponges and they're not present in either fungi or in protists. Now typically the 10 or so Hox genes in an invertebrate genome are organized into only one gene cluster, whereas vertebrates possess multiple duplicates in these clusters. Now, using zebrafish, for example, the Hox genes are organized into seven clusters, four of which are typically found in other terrestrial vertebrates. Now, individ individual Hox genes encode certain proteins which function as position labels for cells at various positions along the area posterior body axis or head to tail. Now these genes provide information to each cell in order to form structures appropriate for a particular position. Now Hox genes are found in the same order along the chromosomes in which they are expressed along the anterior posterior axis of every single animal. Now these clusterings may be conserved due to the requirement to keep Hox genes responsibly close to shared regulatory elements. Now a common question is how did gene duplication change and alter our understanding of the evolution of vertebrates? Well, biologists can study the patterns of the duplication. This develops on our understanding of um, phylogeny and we can improve our understanding of the evolutionary process itself. Now, 
The zebrafish data shows that cluster numbers can vary drastically, which which l loosely um, loses of the individual Hox genes within clusters being common. Genes, even pseudogenes, are apparently maintained in genomes throughout long evolutionary time spans, which may support an idea that there is less of a genotic genomic cost than to the redundancy and to the maintaining and possibly recycling genetic programs for different purposes if genes remain in genomes that might increase the evolutionary potential of evolutionary lineages such as the fish lineage responding quickly and flexibly to changing economical situations biologists can be must be very careful however in regards to connecting gene duplication with complexity because used without qualification or in any sort of expl explicit explanation phenotypic complexity has no value in a scientific investigation now the last thing i want to discuss is the adaptive immunity as gene duplication is also believed to have contributed towards the creation of the adaptive immunity in jawed vertebrates. All surviving vertebrates with jaws, other known as nasotomes, share a complex and anticipatory immune system, which features a repertoire of highly diverse Ag receptors that are generated through somatic rearrangement of i g v d and j gene segments during the development of colonial reverse um lipocytes and that is going to be everything i'm going to be covering in today's video um i hope you enjoyed it so if you leave a like or a comment down below with any suggestions of additional topics you'd like for me to cover or specific areas you'd like me to expand on i'm perfectly happy to cover those to stay up to date with all my future content please subscribe and ring the bell down below to stay notified to when i upload thank you and i hope to see you in my next video bye guys